PD 1612 vis a vis Article 19, Number 1 of the RPC. Fencing and Accessory. Fencing is limited to theft and robbery. The terms theft and robbery are used as a generic term to refer to any kind of unlawful taking, not just theft or robbery. Mere possession of stolen items create a presumption of fencing. Fencing is a principal crime in itself. As such, it can stand on its own. There is no need to prove that one is guilty of theft or robbery. The penalty is higher than that of an accessory. Malum prohibitum, and therefore there is no need to prove criminal intent. The fence need not be a natural person, but may be a firm, association, corporation, or partnership, or other organization. Under accessory, not limited in scope, there is no presumption of being an accessory. It is necessary to prove that the principal committed the crime, hence, before an accessory could be held liable, the principal must have been convicted first of the crime charge. Penalty is less than that imposed in fencing, malum in se, and therefore there is a need to prove criminal intent. Natural person only. Multiple offenders. Reiteration. It is necessary that the offender shall have served out his sentence for the first offense. The previous and subsequent offenses must not be embraced by the same title of the RPC. Not always aggravating discretion of the court to appreciate. Includes offenses under a special law, a generic aggravating circumstance. Recidivism. It is enough that a final judgment has been rendered in the first offense. Requires that the offenses be included in the same title of the code. It increases the penalty to its maximum period. Felonies under RPC only. Generic aggravating circumstance. Habitual delinquency. Within a period of 10 years, from the date of release or last conviction of the crimes covered, he is found guilty of any of said crimes a third time or oftener. Crimes covered are serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, theft, estafa, and falsification. Shall suffer additional penalty, limited to serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, theft, estafa, and falsification. Extraordinary aggravating circumstance which cannot be upset by a mitigating circumstance. Quasi-recidivism. Felony was committed after having been convicted by final judgment of an offense before beginning to serve sentence or while serving the same. First and subsequent conviction may or may not be embraced by the same title of the RPC. Shall be punished by the maximum period of the penalty prescribed by law for the new felony. First crime for which the offender is serving sentence need not be a crime under the RPC, but the second crime must be one under the RPC. Special aggravating circumstance, which may be offset by special privilege mitigating circumstances, not by ordinary mitigating circumstances. Obstruction of Justice, PD 1829. Purpose. The purpose of the law is to discourage public indifference or apathy towards the apprehension and prosecution of criminal offenders. It is necessary to penalize acts which obstruct or frustrate or tend to obstruct or frustrate the successful apprehension and prosecution of criminal offenders. Punishable Acts Any person who knowingly or willfully obstructs, impedes, frustrates, or delays the apprehension of suspects and the investigation and prosecution of criminal cases by committing any of the following acts. 1. Preventing witnesses from testifying in any criminal proceeding or from reporting the commission of any offenses or the identity of any offender by means of bribery, misrepresentation, deceit, intimidation, force, or threats. 2. Altering, destroying, suppressing, or concealing any paper, record, document, or object with intent to impair verity, authenticity, legibility, availability, or admissibility as evidence in any investigation of or official proceedings in criminal cases or to be used in the investigation of or official proceedings in criminal cases. 3. Harboring or concealing or facilitating the escape of any person he knows or has reasonable ground to believe or suspect 
has committed any offense under existing penal laws in order to prevent his arrest, prosecution, and conviction. 4. Publicly using a fictitious name for the purpose of concealing a crime, evading prosecution of the execution of a judgment, or concealing his true name and other personal circumstances for the same purpose or purposes. 5. Delaying the prosecution of criminal cases by obstructing the service of process or court orders or disturbing proceedings in the fiscal's offices in Tanud Bayan or in the courts. 6. Making, presenting, or using any record, document, paper, or object with knowledge of its falsity and with intent to affect the course or outcome of the investigation of or official proceedings in criminal cases. 7. Soliciting, accepting, or agreeing to accept any benefit in consideration of obtaining from, discounting, or impeding the prosecution of a criminal offender. 8. Threatening directly or indirectly another with the infliction of any wrong upon his person, owner, or property, or that of any immediate member or members of his family in order to prevent such person from appearing in the investigation of or official proceedings in criminal cases or imposing a condition, whether lawful or unlawful, in order to prevent a person from appearing in the investigation or in official proceedings in criminal cases. And nine, giving of false or fabricated information to mislead or prevent the law enforcement agencies from apprehending the offender or from protecting the life or property of the victim or fabricating information from the data gathered in confidence by investigating authorities for purposes of background information and not for publication and publishing or disseminating the same to mislead the investigator or the court. Note 1. If any of the acts mentioned herein is penalized by any other law with a higher penalty, the higher penalty shall be imposed. 2. If any of the foregoing acts are committed by a public official or employee, he shall, in addition to the penalties provided thereunder, suffer perpetual disqualification from holding public office. Penalties Reclusion perpetua versus life imprisonment. Reclusion perpetua pertains to the penalty imposed for violation of the RPC. It has fixed duration. It carries with it accessory penalties. Life imprisonment pertains to the penalty imposed for violation of special laws. It has no fixed duration. It does not carry with it accessory penalty. Number one, principal penalties. Those expressly imposed by the court and the judgment of conviction. Number two, accessory penalties, those that are deemed included in the imposition of the principal penalties. Principal penalties, capital punishment, death, afflictive penalties, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification, perpetual or temporary special disqualification, Prison Mayor. Correctional penalties. Prison Correctional. Arresto Mayor. Suspension. Distiero. Light penalties. Arresto Minor. Public censure. Penalties common to the three preceding classes. Fine and bond to keep the peace. Accessory penalties. Perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification. Number two. Perpetual or temporary special disqualification. Number three, suspension from public office, the right to vote, and to be voted for, the profession or calling. Four, civil interdiction. Five, indemnification. Six, for feature or confiscation of instruments and proceeds of the offense. And seven, payment of costs. Application of Articles 50 to 57 of the RPC. Zero represents the penalty prescribed by law in defining a crime which is to be imposed on the principal in a consummated offense. The other figures represent the degrees to which the penalty must be lowered to meet the different situation anticipated by law. However, Articles 50 to 57 shall not apply to the following cases where the law expressly prescribes. A. 
the penalty for a frustrated or attempted felony, or b. to be imposed upon accomplices or accessories, Article 60. Principle. Consummated, zero. Frustrated, one. Attempted, two. Accomplices. Consummated, one. Frustrated, two. Attempted, three. Accessories. Consummated, two. Frustrated, three. Attempted, four. What is the penalty for impossible crime? The penalty for impossible crime is arrest mayor, or a fine ranging from 200 to 500 pesos. What is the basis for the imposition of the proper penalty for impossible crime? The court must take into consideration the following, the social danger and the degree of criminality shown by the offender. Article 59, RPC. Computation of penalty. In computing the proper impossible penalty, what are the factors that should be considered? 1. Prescribed or graduated penalty. 2. Indivisible or divisible penalty. Number 3. Applicability or non-applicability of the indeterminate sentence law. Prescribed or graduated penalty. What is the prescribed penalty? The prescribed penalty is that found in Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code. What is the graduated penalty? The graduated penalty is the impossible penalty after taking into consideration certain graduating factors. What are the graduating factors? 1. Stages of execution. 2. Nature of participation. Note, for number 1 and number 2, see table on the application of Articles 50 57 of the RPC. Presence of Privilege Mitigating Circumstance Privilege mitigating circumstance, adjust the penalty by degree, not subject to the offset rule. Ordinary mitigating circumstance, adjust the penalty by period subject to the offset rule. What are the privileged mitigating circumstances under the RPC? 1. When the offender is a minor under 18 years of age. 2. When the crime committed is not wholly excusable. 3. When there are two or more mitigating circumstances and no aggravating circumstance, the court shall impose the penalty next lower to that prescribed by law, in the period that it may deem applicable, according to the number and nature of such circumstances. 4. Voluntary release of the person legally detained within three days without the offender attaining his purpose and before the institution of the criminal action. 5. Abandonment without justification by the offended spouse in case of adultery. Number six, concealing dishonor in case of infanticide. Note, if it is the maternal grandparent who committed the offense to conceal dishonor, the penalty imposed is one degree lower. If it, it is the pregnant woman who committed the offense to conceal dishonor, the penalty imposed is two degrees lower. In case of concealing dishonor by a pregnant woman in abortion, the Possible penalty is merely lowered by period and not by degree, hence not a privileged mitigating circumstance. Minimum age of criminal responsibility and treatment of child below the age of responsibility, RA 9344 as amended by RA 10630. Age bracket, 15 years old and below, criminal liability exempt. Treatment. The child shall be subjected to a community-based intervention program. Above 15 but below 18, who acted without discernment, exempt. The child shall be subject to a community-based intervention program. Above 15 but below 18, who acted with discernment, not exempt. Such child shall be subjected to a diversion program. Note. The exemption from criminal liability in the cases specified above does not include exemption from civil liability, which shall be enforced in accordance with existing laws. RA 9344, as amended by 10630. What are the privileged mitigating circumstances contemplated under Article 69 of the RPC? 1. Incomplete justifying. And number 2. Incomplete exempting circumstances, provided that the majority of their conditions are present. For Article 69 of the RPC to apply, it is necessary that some of the conditions required to justify the deed 
or to exempt from criminal liability are lacking, the majority of such conditions are nonetheless present. Note, if there are only two requisites, the presence of one is already considered as majority. When the circumstance has an indispensable element, that element must be present in case Regalado, 2007. That was number three. Rules on graduation of penalties. First rule, where the graduated penalty is a single full penalty. Single penalty, one full penalty. Compound penalty composed of two penalties. Complex penalty consists of three penalties. Whether the prescribed penalty is single, compound, or complex, the graduated penalty is single and full penalty. Example, homicide. Prescribed penalty is single penalty of reclusion temporal. Degree law is prison mirror. Degree's law is prison correctional. Murder. Prescribed penalty is compound penalty of reclusion perpetua to death. Degree law is reclusion temporal. Number two. Degree's law is prison mirror. Treason committed by a resident alien prescribed penalty is complex penalty of reclusion temporal to death. One degree lower is prison mayor. Two degrees lower is prison correctional. Second rule, if the prescribed penalty is a period, then the graduated penalty is also in, in period. Single period, one full period, compound period, compound of two periods, complex penalty consists of three periods. Example, technical malversation. The prescribed penalty is single period of prison correctional in its maximum period. One degree lower is arresto mayor in its maximum period. Two degrees lower is arresto mayor in its medium period. Taft. The prescribed penalty is compound period of prison correctional in its medium period to prison correctional in its maximum period. One degree lower is arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period. Two degrees lower is arresto mayor in its maximum period or arresto mayor in its medium period. Simple robbery. The prescribed penalty is complex period of prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its medium period. One degree lower is arresto mayor in its maximum to prison correctional in its medium period. Two degrees lower is this chair in its maximum period to arrest the mayor in its medium period. Third rule, when the prescribed penalty is composed of a full penalty and penalties with period. Example, section five, letter B of RA 7610, the prescribed penalty is reclusion temporal in its medium period to reclusion perpetua. The graduated penalty must be complex, period. One degree lower is prison mayor in its medium period to reclusion temp in its minimum period. Divisible or indivisible penalty. Rules for the application of indivisible penalties. Article 63. What are the indivisible penalties? 1. Reclusion perpetua. Number 2. Death. Number 3. Reclusion perpetua to death. First rule. The law prescribes a single indivisible penalty. Whatever may be the nature or number of aggravating or mitigating circumstances that they have attended the commission of the crime, the court shall apply the prescribed penalty. Example, simple rape. The prescribed penalty is reclusion perpetua. Qualified rape. The prescribed penalty is death. The crime committed is simple rape, and the penalty is reclusion perpetua. There are two mitigating circumstances. Can you appreciate the two mitigating circumstances to appreciate the special mitigating circumstance? For purposes of making the penalty one degree lower? No, because the special mitigating circumstance consisting of two mitigating circumstances is found under Article 64. There is no special circumstance in Article 63 of the RPC. Second rule, the law prescribes two indiv indivisible penalties. There is only one prescribed penalty consisting of two indivisible penalties that is reclusion perpetua to that for the following crimes under the RPC. 1. Powerside. 2 murder, 3, infanticide, 4, kidnapping and serious illegal detention, 5, rape with the use of a deadly weapon, 6, rape by two or more persons, 7, 
when by reason or on occasion of rape the victim becomes insane. 8. When rape is attempted and homicide is committed. 9. Robbery with homicide. 10. Robbery with rape with the use of deadly weapon or by two or more persons. Note. Destructive arson under PD 1613 is also punishable by reclusion perpetua to death. When the penalty is composed of two indivisible penalties, the following rules shall be observed. When there is only one aggravating circumstance, the greater penalty shall be imposed. B. When there is neither mitigating nor aggravating circumstance, the lesser penalty shall be imposed. C. When there is a mitigating circumstance and no aggravating circumstance, the lesser penalty shall be imposed. If there are both mitigating and aggravating circumstances present, offset one another, then apply the rules. The crime committed is parricide. The penalty is reclusion perpetua to death. There are two mitigating circumstances. Can you appreciate the two mitigating circumstances as special mitigating circumstances? For purposes of graduating the penalty from reclusion perpetua to death to reclusion temporal? No. In People v. Takbobo, it was held that when there are two or more mitigating circumstances and no aggravating circumstance, but the imposable penalty are indivisible in nature, the court cannot proceed by analogy with the provisions of paragraph 5 of article 64 and impose the penalty lower by one degree. The rule applicable is found in Article 63 and not in Article 64. The crime committed is parricide. There are three aggravating circumstances and two mitigating circumstances. What is the proper imposable penalty? Applying the offset rule, only one aggravating circumstance will remain. Thus, the greater penalty, which is death, is the proper imposable penalty. However, because of RA 9346, the penalty will be reduced to reclusion perpetua. The crime is parricide. There are two aggravating circumstances and two mitigating circumstances. What is the proper imposable penalty? Applying the offset rule, no modifying circumstance will remain. Since there is neither mitigating nor aggravating circumstance, the lesser penalty, which is reclusion perpetua, is the proper imposable penalty. Rules for the application of divisible penalties. Article 64. What are the divisible penalties? 1. Penalty composed of three periods. 2. Penalty not composed of three periods. 3. Complex penalty. 4. Penalty without a specific legal form. Penalty composed of three periods. When the penalty is composed of three periods, the following rules shall be observed. A. When there is neither aggravating nor mitigating, the penalty is in its medium period shall be imposed. Letter B. When there is only a mitigating circumstance, the penalty in its minimum period shall be imposed. C. When there is only an aggravating circumstance, the penalty in its maximum period shall be imposed. Table showing the duration of divisible penalties and the time included in each of their periods. Penalties. Reclusion temporal. Time included in the penalties in its entirety from 12 years and one day to 20 years. Time included in its minimum period from 12 years and one day to 14 years and 8 months. Time included in its medium period from 14 years eight months and one day to 17 years and four months. Time included in its maximum period from 17 years, four months and one day to 20 years. Prison mayor, absolute disqualification, special temporary disqualification. Time included in the penalty in its entirety from six years and one day to 12 years. Time included in its minimum period from six years and one day to eight years. Time included in its medium period from eight years and one day to 10 years. Time included in its maximum from 10 years and one day to 12 years. Prison correctional suspension distiero. Time included in the penalty in its entirety from six months and one day to six years. Time included in its minimum period from six months and one day to two years and four months. Time included in its medium period 
from two years, four months, and one day, to four years and two months. Time included in its maximum period, from four years, two months and one day, to six years. Arresto mayor. Time included in the penalty in its entirety, from one month and one day to six months. Time included in its minimum period, from one month to two months. Time included in its medium period, from two months and one day to four months. Time included in its maximum period, from four months and one day to six months. Arrest to menor, from one to thirty days. Time included in its minimum period, from one to ten days. Time included in its medium period, from eleven days to twenty days. Time included in its maximum period, from twenty-one days to thirty days. The crime committed is homicide. The penalty is reckless and temporal. The accused is a minor. What is the proper imposable penalty? Prison mayor, because minority is a privilege mitigating circumstance. Suppose there is an aggravating circumstance which is disguised. Prison mayor in its maximum period. Suppose there are two aggravating circumstances, will you consider the two aggravating circumstances for purposes of upgrading the penalty of prison mayor to reclusion temporal? No. In the case of People v. Manlolo, the Supreme Court, citing Article 64, Paragraph 6 of the RPC, held that whatever may be the number and nature of the aggravating circumstances, the courts shall not impose a greater penalty than that prescribed by law in its maximum period. D. Suppose there is neither aggravating nor mitigating circumstance. Prison mayor in its medium period. Suppose there is one mitigating circumstance, which is confession. Prison mayor in its minimum period. Suppose there are two mitigating circumstances, which are confession and voluntary surrender. The two mitigating circumstances will be considered as a special mitigating circumstance for graduating the penalty under Article 64, Paragraph 5 of the RPC, when two or more mitigating circumstances and no aggravating circumstances are present, the court shall impose the penalty next lower to that prescribed by law. Further, since there is other mitigating or aggravating, the penalty shall be imposed in its medium period, thus the proper imposable penalty is prison correctional in its medium period. Suppose there are three mitigating circumstances. Will you consider these three mitigating circumstances a special mitigating circumstance for the purpose of reducing prison mayor to prison correctional? The two mitigating circumstances will be appreciated as a special mitigating circumstance for purposes of reducing prison mayor to prison correctional. Since there is one remaining mitigating circumstance, the proper period is minimum period. Thus, the proper imposable penalty is prison correctional in its minimum period. Suppose there are four mitigating circumstances. Will you appreciate the special mitigating circumstance twice? No. The special mitigating circumstance will be appreciated only once. Even if there are four mitigating circumstances, it will be appreciated for the purpose of reducing prison mayor to prison correctional. Considering the two remaining mitigating circumstances, it will be used to apply the penalty in its minimum period. Thus, the proper imposable penalty is prison correctional in its minimum period. Suppose there is a combination of the modifying circumstances. Apply first offset rule, then consider the remaining modifying circumstances. If after applying the offset rule, there is still remaining of one or two or three aggravating circumstances, then you will apply the penalty in its maximum period. If after applying the offset rule, no modifying circumstance remain, then you will apply the penalty in its medium period. If after applying the offset rule, one mitigating circumstance remains, then you will apply the penalty in its mini mi minimum period. Suppose there are three mitigating circumstances and one aggravating circumstance. Applying the offset rule, there are two mitigating circumstances remaining. Can you appreciate those as a special mitigating circumstance? No. Because to appreciate the special mitigating circumstance, it is important that there are two or more mitigating circumstances and no aggravating circumstance. Article 64, Paragraph 5. Once you apply the offset rule, you cannot appreciate the special mitigating circumstance because the application of the offset rule presupposes that there is an aggravating circumstance. Penalty that composed of three periods. Example, the prescribed penalty is prison mayor in its medium period to maximum period. 
How do you compute for its minimum, medium, and maximum period? First rule, divide the time included in the duration of the prescribed penalty into three equal portions. Prison mayor in its medium period to maximum period is eight years and one day to 12 years. In computing, you delete one day. What will be left is eight years and 12 years. Then you subtract eight years from 12 years. That is four years. Then divide the four years into three year into three equal portions, you will have one year and four months for each period. What? Second rule, form the period out of the three equal portions, eight years plus one year and four months, nine years and four months, nine years and four months plus one year and four months, 10 years and eight months, 10 years and eight months plus one year and four months, 12 years. Prison mayor in its medium period to maximum period, Medium period, eight years and one day to nine years and four months. Medium period is nine years and four months and one day to 10 years and eight months. Maximum period is 10 years and eight months and one day to 12 years. Wow. Complex penalty, Article 77, Paragraph 1, RPC. Example, the prescribed penalty for treason committed by a resident alien under Article 114 of the RPC is reclusion temporal to that penalty. Minimum period, reclusion temporal, the lightest component. Medium period, reclusion perpetua. Maximum period is death. Suppose there is mitigating circumstance. Apply the penalty in its minimum period that is reclusion temporal. Suppose there is no modifying circumstance. Apply the penalty in its medium period that is reclusion perpetua. Suppose there is aggravating circumstance, apply the penalty in its maximum period, that is death. Another example, the crime committed is robbery. The prescribed penalty is prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its medium period. Minimum period, prison correctional in its maximum, the lightest component. Medium period, prison mayor in its minimum period. Maximum period, prison mayor in its medium period. Suppose there is a mitigating circumstance. Apply the penalty in its minimum period, prison correctional in its maximum period. Suppose there is no modifying circumstance. Apply the penalty in its medium period, that is prison mayor in its minimum period. Suppose there is aggravating circumstance. Apply the penalty in its maximum period, that is prison mayor in its medium, medium period. Another example, the crime committed is sexual abuse under sex, Section 5 of RA 7610. The prescribed penalty is reclusion temporal in its medium period to reclusion perpetua. Minimum period, reclusion temporal in its medium period, the lightest component. Medium period, reclusion temporal in its maximum period, and maximum period is reclusion perpetua. Penalty without a specific legal form. Example, the crime committed is intentional mutilation. The prescribed penalty is reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua. First rule. Form the maximum period out of the most severe component. Maximum period, reclusion perpetua. Second rule, divide the lightest component into two equal portions. Reclusion temporal is 12 years and one day to 20 years. In computing, you delete one day. What will be left is 12 years and 20 years. Then you subtract 12 years from 20 years, that is eight years. Then divide the eight years into two equal portions. So. It will be four years for each period. This rule, third rule, form the minimum period and medium period out of two equal portions. 12 years plus four years, that is 16 years. 16 years plus four years, that is 20 years. Minimum period, 12 years and one day to 16 years. Medium period, 16 years and one day to 20 years. Maximum period, reclusion perpetual. Applicability or non-applicability of the indeterminate sentence law. Explain the application of the indeterminate sentence law, ISL, 2016. The court shall sentence the accused to an indeterminate sentence, the maximum term of which shall be that which, in view of the attending circumstances, could be properly imposed under the rules of the revised penal code, and the minimum of which shall be within the range of the penalty next lower to that prescribed by the code for the offense. And if the offense is punished by any other law, special law, the court shall sentence the, the accused to an indeterminate sentence, the maximum term of which shall not exceed the maximum fixed by said law, 
and the minimum shall not be less than the minimum term prescribed by the same. Section 1 of ISL. The court must, instead of a single fixed penalty, except where the impossible penalty is one year or less, determine two penalties referred to the ISL as the maximum and minimum terms. If the ISL is applicable, the convict will be sentenced to an indeterminate sentence that consists of a minimum term and a maximum term. The moment the convict serves the minimum term, he may be considered for parole. If the ISL is not applicable, the convict will be sentenced to a straight penalty, which is the imposable penalty in accordance with the RPC. When is the ISL not applicable? The ISL does not apply to 1. Persons convicted of offenses punished with that penalty or life imprisonment. Note, reclusion perpetua, either as a prescribed or graduated penalty, is included because RA 9346, which prohibits death penalty. ISL is not applicable because it is an indivisible penalty, and when reclusion perpetua is imposed, the convict is not eligible for parole. 2. Those convicted of treason, conspiracy, or proposal to commit treason. 3. Those convicted of misprison of treason, rebellion, sedition, or espionage. I always mispronounce that. 4. Those convicted of piracy. 5. Habitual delinquents. No. Recidivists are entitled to avail the ISL. 6. Those who shall have escaped from confinement or evaded sentence. Note. When the accused escaped from jail while his case was on appeal, he is not entitled to the benefits of ISL. 7. Those who violated the terms of conditional pardon granted to them by the chief executive. 8. Those whose maximum term of imprisonment does not exceed one year. 9. Those who, upon the approval of the law, December 5, 1933, had been sentenced to final judgment. And 10. Those sentenced to the penalty of distiero or suspension. Note. Included are those sentenced, disqualification, or fine because these penalties are not prison sentence. What are the rules in imposing a penalty under the indeterminate sentence law? 2013, 2010, 2009, 5, 1999, bar. When penalty is imposed by RPC, the maximum term is that which in view of the attending circumstances could be properly imposed under the RPC. Number two, the minimum term in, is within the range of the penalty next lower to that prescribed by the RPC. Prescribed penalty is what the penalty is without looking at the circumstances, as opposed to imposed penalty which takes into account the circumstances. When penalty is imposed by special penal law, 1. Maximum term must not exceed the maximum term fixed by said law. 2. Minimum term must not be less than the minimum term prescribed by the same. Example, the penalty is prison correctional in its minimum period and there is confession. A. The judge fixed the penalty to six months in one day. The ISL is not applicable because it does not exceed one year. So the convict should serve a straight penalty of six months in one day of prison correctional. B. The judge fix the penalty to one year and one day. The ISL is applicable because it exceeded one year. Since the ISL is applicable, you make the one year and one day as the maximum term. Then you compute for the minimum term. The penalty one degree lower to prison correctional is arresto mayor, which is one month and one day to six months. That is the range of the minimum term. During grand alumni homecoming of the Bulabug Elementary School, Ladines suddenly and without warning approached and stabbed Irwin below the navel with a machete. Ladines then left after delivering the blow. At that juncture, Likup also mounted his attack against Irwin, but the latter evaded the blow by stepping back. Irwin pulled out the machete from his body and wielded it against Likup, whom he hit in the chest. Likup pursued but could not catch up with Erwin because they both eventually fell down. Erwin was rushed to the hospital where he succumbed. The RDC convicted Ladinus of homicide and fixed the indeterminate penalty of 10 years and one day of prison mayor as minimum of to 17 years and 4 months of the medium period of reclusion temporal as maximum. The CA affirmed the penalty fixed by the RTC 
Did the lower courts impose the proper penalty? No. The lower courts could not impose seventeen years and four months of the medium period of reclusion temporal, which was the ceiling of the medium period of reclusion temporal, as the maximum of the indeterminate penalty without specifying the justification for so imposing. They thereby ignored that although Article 64 of the Revised Penal Code, which has set the rules for the application of penalties which contain three periods, requires under its first rule that the courts should impose the penalty prescribed by law in the medium period should there be neither aggravating nor mitigating circumstances. Its seventh rule expressly demands that, within the limits of each period, the courts shall determine the extent of the penalty according to the number and nature of the aggravating and mitigating circumstances, and the greater or lesser extent of the evil produced by the crime. By not specifying the justification for imposing the ceiling of the period of the imposable penalty, the fixing of the indeterminate sentence become arbitrary or whimsical or capricious. In the absence of the specification, the maximum of the indeterminate sentence for Ladinus should be the lowest of the medium period of the reclusion temporal, which is 14 years, 8 months, and 1 day of reclusion temporal. Ladinus versus People Pinlock was found guilty for violating Section 5, Letter B, Article 3 of RA 7610 as special law. However, the original trial court and the Court of Appeals applied the indeterminate sentence law in fixing the penalty to be imposed on the accused. Is indeterminate sentence law applicable to convictions for a violation of a special law? Yes. Notwithstanding the fact that RA 7610 is a special law, the petitioner in this case may enjoy the benefits of the indeterminate sentence law. The Act No. 4103 as amended, otherwise known as the indeterminate sentence law, provided in Section 1 that if the offense is punished by any other law, the court shall sentence the accused to an indeterminate sentence, the maximum term of which shall not exceed the maximum fixed by said law, and the minimum shall not be less than the minimum term prescribed by the same. Binlock versus People The Kido was at the gate of Dalu on elementary school, watching the graduation ceremony of the high school students, Espinola then arrived. Later, however, De Quito saw Hubila approach Espinola and stab the latter. With Hubila's left arm around the neck of Espinola, Hubila stabbed Espinola using a bladed weapon. De Quito aided Espinola as the latter was already struggling to his feet and later brought him to the hospital. The RTC rendered its judgment, finding Hubila guilty of homicide as charged, and sentenced him to suffer the indeterminate penalty of imprisonment for four years and one day of prison correctional, as minimum to eight years and one day of prison mayor, as maximum. On appeal, the CA affirmed the Hubila's conviction but reduced the sentence to six months and one day to six years of prison correctional, as minimum, to six years and one day to twelve years of prison mayor, as maximum. On motion for reconsideration by Hubila, the CA sentenced him to an indeterminate penalty of six months and one day of prison correctional, as minimum to eight years and one day of prison mayor. Did the CA impose the correct penalty imposable on Hubila, taking into consideration the pertinent provision of Republic Act No. 9344, the Revised Penal Code and Act No. 4103 in Determinate Sentence Law? Yes. Article 249 of the Revised Penal Code prescribes the penalty of reclusion temporal for homicide. Considering that Hubila then a minor at the time of the commission of the crime being 17 years, 4 months and 28 days old, when he committed the homicide on March 30, 2000, such minority was a privilege mitigating circumstance that lowered the penalty to prison mayor. Under the indeterminate sentence law, the minimum of the indeterminate sentence should be within the penalty Next lower than the imposable penalty, which herein was present correctional. Example, six months and one day to six years. For the maximum of the indeterminate sentence, prison mayor in its medium period, eight years and one day to ten years, was proper because there were no mitigating or aggravating circumstances present. Accordingly, the CEO imposed the indeterminate penalty of imprisonment of six months and one day of prison correctional as minimum to eight years and one day of prison mayor as maximum. 
Is Hubila's insistence that the maximum of this indeterminate sentence of eight years and one day of prison mayor should be reduced to only six years of prison correctional to enable him to apply for probation under Presidential Decree 968 tenable? No. Hubila's insistence is bereft of legal basis. Neither the revised penal code nor Republic Act number 9344 nor any other relevant law or rule support or justify the further reduction of the maximum of the indeterminate sentence. To yield to his insistence would be to impose an illegal penalty and would cause the court to deliberately violate the law. Who beloves his people? Bruno was charged with homicide for killing the 75-year-old owner of his rooming house. The prosecution proved that Bruno stabbed the owner causing his death and that the killing happened at 10 in the evening in the house where the victim and Bruno lived. Bruno, on the other hand, successfully proved that he voluntarily surrendered to the authorities that he pleaded guilty to the crime charge, that it was the victim who first attacked and did so without any provocation on his part. But he prevailed because he managed to draw his knife with which he stabbed the victim. The penalty of homicide is reclusion temporal. Assuming a judgment of conviction and after considering the attendant circumstances, what penalties should the judge impose? 2013. Bruno should be sentenced to an indeterminate sentence penalty of arrest to mayor in any of its period as minimum to prison correctional in its medium period as maximum. Bruno was entitled to the privileged mitigating circumstances of incomplete self-defense and the presence of at least two ordinary mitigating circumstances, voluntary surrender and plea of guilt without any aggravating circumstance under Article 69 and 64 of the RPC respectively, which lowers the prescribed penalty for homicide which is reclusion temporal to prison correctional. Further explanation. In this kind of question, the bar examiner wants you to determine whether there was self-defense or not. The problem provides that the defense was able to prove that it was the man who first attacked Bruno. Therefore, there was unlawful aggression, but there was no provocation coming from Bruno. Therefore, there was a lack of sufficient provocation. So, two elements of self-defense are present. How about the third element of self-defense? Reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel the attack is this present. The third element of self-defense is absent because based on the facts proven by Bruno, although it was the man who attacked Bruno first, he prevailed upon the man because he made use of a knife and stabbed the man. While the man attacked Bruno by means of his fist, it is not reasonably necessary for Bruno to make use of knife in killing the man. So what we have is an in incomplete self-defense. Under paragraph 1 of Article 13, in case of incomplete self-defense, if aside from unlawful aggression, another element is present but not all, we have a privileged mitigating circumstance. Therefore, this incomplete self-defense shall be treated as a privileged mitigating circumstance. The prosecution was able to prove that the man is 75 years old. Would you consider the aggravating circumstance of disrespect of age? No. Even if Bruno killed the said 75-year-old man, there was no showing in the problem that he disrespected the age of the man. Would you consider night time as an aggravating circumstance? No. Even if the problem says that the crime was committed at 10 in the evening, it did not say whether the house was lighted or not. There was also no showing that the offender deliberately sought night time to commit the crime. Would you consider dwelling? No. In the said dwelling, both Bruno and the victim are residing. Therefore, dwelling is not an aggravating circumstance because both of them are living in the same dwelling. It cannot be said that when Bruno killed the man, he disrespected the dwelling of the said man. Therefore, we have no aggravating circumstance present. Take note that Bruno was able to prove voluntary surrender, vol voluntary plea of guilt, and then we have an incomplete self-defense, a privileged mitigating circumstance. Applying these conclusions, we have two ordinary mitigating circumstances with one privileged mitigating circumstance and with no aggravating circumstance. How do we compute the penalty? Consider first the privileged mitigating circumstance. Whenever there is a privileged mitigating circumstance present, apply it first before computing the penalty. In this example, since we have incomplete self-defense, you have to lower the penalty by one degree because it is a privileged mitigating circumstance. Thus, it will become prison mayor. Consider the ordinary mitigating circumstance. So now, there are two ordinary mitigating circumstances with no aggravating circumstance. Article 
Code 64 provides that when there are two mitigating with no aggravating, lower the penalty by one degree. Therefore, if you lower it by one degree, it is now prison correctional. Note, the penalty can be lowered only once, no matter how many the mitigating circumstances are, except for the attendance of a privileged mitigating circumstance, in which case it must be considered. 3. Determine the maximum sentence for after considering all mitigating and aggravating circumstances, if any. You have already applied everything so it will become present correctional in its medium period. Note, it is in its medium period because when the penalty does not provide for period, it is automatically in its medium period, save for those penalties which are indivisible. 4. Determine the minimum term of the sentence. You go one degree lower, and that is arresto mayor. Therefore, arresto mayor in its medium period, or any period in the discretion of the court, is the minimum term of the sentence. Arresto mayor in its minimum term. Maki, a security guard, arrived home late one night. After rendering over time, he was shocked to see Joy, his wife, and Ken, his best friend, in the act of having sexual intercourse. Maki pulled out his service gun and shot and killed Ken. The court found that Ken died under exceptional circumstances and exonerated Maki of murder but sentenced him to this terror, conformably with Article 247 of the Revised Penal Code. The court also ordered Maki to pay indemnity to the heirs of the victim in the amount of 50000 While serving his sentence, Maki entered the prohibited area and had a pot session with Ivy, Joy's sister, is Maki entitled to an indeterminate sentence in case he, he is found guilty of the use of prohibited substance? Explain your answer. No, Maki is not entitled to the benefit of the indeterminate sentence law for having evaded the sentence which banished or placed him on this terror. Section 2 of the said law expressly provides that the law shall not apply to those who shall have evaded sentence. Alternative answer. No because the penalty for use of any dangerous drug by a first offender is not imprisonment, but rehabilitation in a government center for a minimum period of six months. Section 15 or A9165. The indeterminate sentence law does not apply when the penalty is imprisonment not exceeding one year. An agonizing and protracted trial having come to a close, the judge found A guilty beyond reasonable doubt of homicide and imposed on him a straight penalty of six years and one day of prison mayor. The public prosecutor objected to the sentence on the ground that the proper penalty should have been 12 years and one day of reclusion temporal. The defense counsel chimed in, contending that application of the indeterminate sentence law should lead to the imposition of a straight penalty of six months, one day, of prison correctional only. Who of the three is on the right track? 2010. None of the contentions is correct because the indeterminate sentence law has not been followed. The imposition of penalty for the crime of homicide, which is penalized by imprisonment exceeding one year and is divisible, is covered by the indeterminate sentence law. The said law requires that the sentence in this case should reflect a minimum term for purposes of parole and a maximum term fixing the limit of the imprisonment, imposing a straight penalty is incorrect. Subsidiary penalty. Subsidiary personal liability is to be suffered by the convict who has no property which wits to meet the fine, at the rate of one day for each amount equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate prevailing in the Philippines at the time of the rendition of judgment of conviction by the trial court. Is subsidiary penalty an accessory penalty? A subsidiary penalty is not an accessory penalty. It is thus required that it be specifically imposed by the court in its judgment. It is a penalty imposed upon the accused and served by him in lieu of the fine which he fails to pay on account of insolvency. The accused cannot be made to undergo subsidiary imprisonment unless the judgment expressly so provides. Rule on Subsidiary Penalty, Section 1, R.A. 10.15.9. 1. 
If the principal penalty imposed be present correctional or arrest and fine, he shall remain under confinement until his fine referred in the preceding paragraph is satisfied, but his subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed one-third of the term of the sentence, and in no case shall it continue for more than one year, and no fraction or part of a day shall be counted against the prisoner. 2. When the principal penalty imposed be only a fine, the subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed six months. If the culprit shall have been prosecuted for a grave or less grave felony, and shall not exceed fifteen days, if for a light felony. 3. When the principal penalty imposed is higher than prison correctional, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit. 4. If the principal penalty imposed is not to be executed by confinement in a penal institution, but such penalty is a fixed duration, the convict, during the period of time established in the preceding rules, shall continue to suffer the same deprivations as those of which the principal penalty consists. 5. The subsidiary personal liability, which the convict may have suffered by reason of his insolvency, shall not relieve him from the fine in case his financial circumstances should improve. No. When the penalty prescribed for the offense is imprisonment, it is the penalty actually imposed by the court, not the penalty provided for by the code, which should be the basis in the determination whether or not subsidiary penalty should be imposed. Threefold Rule What are the three systems of imposition of penalties in case two or more penalties are imposed on one and the same accused? 1. Material Accumulation System No limitation, whatever. All the penalties for all violations were imposed even if they reached beyond the natural span of human life. 2. Juridical accumulation system, limited to not more than the threefold length of time corresponding to the most severe and in no case exceed 40 years. 3. Absorption system, the lesser penalties are absorbed by the graver penalties it is observed in the imposition of the penalty in complex crime. Continuing Absorption. crimes, a special complex System. crimes, like robbery with homicide, etc. What is the threefold rule? The threefold rule means that the maximum duration of a convict sentence shall not be more than three times the length of time corresponding to the most severe of the penalties imposed upon him, but in no case exceed 40 years. Note, all the penalties even by different courts at different times cannot exceed threefold to most severe penalties. Probation law. Probation, it is a disposition under which a defendant, after conviction and sentence, is released subject to conditions imposed by the court and to the supervision of a probation officer. Note, probation only affects the criminal aspect of the case and has no bearing on his civil liability. Who are disqualified to avail the benefits of the probation law? 1. Sentenced to serve a maximum term of imprisonment of more than six years. 2. Convicted of subversion or any crime against the national security of the public order. 3. Who have previously been convicted by final judgment of an offense punishable by imprisonment of not less than one month in one day and a fine not less than 200 pesos. 4. Who have been once on probation under the provision of this decree. 5 who are already serving sentence at the time the substantive provision of this decree became applicable pursuant to section 33 hereof. 6. If he appeals the judgment or conviction, however, see Colinars v. People, 2013 bar. If he is convicted of violation of election offenses, that is number 7. Note, in multiple prison terms, those imposed against the accused found guilty of several offenses should not be added up and their sum total should not be determinative of his disqualification from probation since the law uses the word maximum, not total, term of imprisonment. Francisco versus C.A. Arnold Colinares was found guilty of frustrated homicide by the RTC. On appeal, C.A. affirmed. On petition for review, Supreme Court ruled that he was only guilty of attempted homicide, in which the penalty is probationable. Is Colinaris now entitled to apply for probation upon remand of the case to the lower court even after he has perfected his appeal to a previous conviction for straighted homicide which was not probationable?
Yes, the probation law, as amended, provides that no application for probation shall be entertained or granted if the defendant has perfected the appeal from the judgment of conviction, provided that when the judgment of conviction imposing an unprobationable penalty is appealed or reviewed and such judgment is modified to the imposition of a probationable penalty, the defendant shall be allowed to apply for probation based on the modified decision before such decision becomes final. The application for probation based on the modified decision shall be filed in the trial court where the judgment of conviction imposing an unprobationable penalty was rendered, or in the trial court where such case has since been re-raffled. In a case involving several defendants, where some have taken further appeal, the other defendants may apply for probation by submitting a written application and attaching thereto a certified true copy of the judgment of conviction. The trial court shall, upon receipt of the application filed, suspend the execution of the sentence imposed in the judgment. This notwithstanding, the accused shall lose the benefit of probation should he seek a review of the modified decision which already imposes a probationable penalty. Probation may be granted whether the sentence imposes a term of imprisonment or a fine only. The filing of the application shall be deemed a waiver of the right to appeal. An order granting or denying probation shall not be appealable. RA 10707, Section 1, Amending Section 4 of PD 968, approved last November 26, 2015. Alternative answer. What is clear is that, had the RTC done what was right in post on Arnold the correct penalty of two years and four months maximum, he would have had the right to apply for probation. Arnold did not appeal from a judgment that would have allowed him to apply for probation. He did not have a choice between appeal and probation. While it is true that probation is a mere privilege, the point is not that Arnold has the right to such privilege. He certainly does not have. What he has is the right to apply for that privilege. If the court allows him to apply for probation because of the lowered penalty, it is still up to the trial judge to decide whether or not to grant him the privilege of probation taking into account the full circumstances of his case, Culinaris versus People. Menno was convicted by final judgment of the crime of arbitrary detention and was sentenced to suffer imprisonment by the RTC. On the ground, Menno filed a petition to disqualify Menno from running for Punung Barangay. Menno argued that he was already granted probation, which effectively restores him all the civil rights, including the right to vote and be voted for in the elections. The Comelec and Bank disqualified Meno, citing Section 40, Letter A of the Local Government Code. Meno argues that the disqualification under the Local Government Code applies only to those who have served their sentence and not to probationers because the latter do not serve the adjudged sentence. The probation law should allegedly be read as an exception to the Local Government Code. Is Meno disqualified from running for public office? No. Meno is not disqualified from running for public office. During the period of probation, the probationer is not disqualified from running for a public office because the accessory penalty of suspension from public office is put on hold for the duration of the probation. The period within which a person is under probation cannot be equated with service of the sentence adjudged. Section 4 of the probation law specifically provides that the grant of probation suspends the execution of the sentence. During the period of probation, the probationer does not serve the penalty imposed upon him by the court, but is merely required to comply with all the conditions prescribed in the probation order. The probation law should be construed as an exception to the local government code. Moreno v. Comelec Pardon vis-à-vis -vis probation Pardon extinguishes criminal liability, includes any crime, and is exercised individually by the president, merely looks forward and relieves the offender from the consequences of an offense of which he has been convicted. It does not work for the restoration of the rights to hold public office or the right of suffrage unless such rights are expressly restored by means of pardon. Exercise when the person is already convicted. Being a private act by the president, it must be pleaded and proved by the person pardoned. Does not alter the fact that the accused is a recidivist, as it produces only the extinction of the personal effects of the penalty, does not extinguish the civil liability of the offender. Under probation, 
It does not extinguish criminal liability. It merely suspends the execution of the sentence. It's exercised individually by the trial court. It promotes the correction and rehabilitation of an offender by providing him with individualized treatment, provides an opportunity for the reformation of a penitent offender, which might be less probable if he were to serve a prison sentence and prevent the commission of offenses. Those who have not served their sentence by reason of the grant of probation, which should not be equated with service of sentence, should not likewise be disqualified from running for a local elective office because the two-year period of ineligibility under Section 40, Letter A of the Local Government Code does not even begin to run. Moreno v. Comelec must be exercised within the period of perfecting an appeal. Being a grant by the trial court, it follows that the trial court also has the power to order its revocation in a proper case and under proper circumstances. It does not alter the fact that the accused is a recidivist, as it provides only for an opportunity of reformation to the penitent offender. It does not extinguish the civil liability of the offender.